Hey guys, it's Suetonia here. This time I'm going to talk about EVE Echoes, which is the mobile version of EVE Online that was announced at EVE Vegas in 2018. EVE Echoes is currently in open beta right now, so I thought I'd dive in and take a look at the main gameplay features and show you the differences between EVE Online and EVE Echoes. If you're interested in giving EVE Echoes a shot yourself, I've left a link to the EVE Echoes website in the description. Now I need to mention that this video is sponsored content, but I have personally invested over 50 hours into EVE Echo so far, so I'm going to give you an honest look at the game. The way I'm going to structure this video is I'm going to whiz through the tutorial of the game first of all, and then I'm going to go through the skill system, the mission system, the industrial side of things, and then take a look at some PvP and some ships. If you're an EVE veteran or familiar with EVE Online, you may want to skip through the tutorial part of this video since the way it plays out and the controls and the UI are very similar to EVE and you should already have a firm grasp of it. Activating clone. Please confirm your race. So just like in EVE Online, when you first start the game you'll have to make a character by choosing a race and then a bloodline. Do not worry about this too much since just like in EVE, any character can use any ship in the game, and currently in EVE Echoes there aren't actually any differences in skills, the only difference is your starting location and the location of where you spawn if you get pod killed when you choose a race and bloodline. You then just choose a portrait that you like, and that will be your character's avatar, you can refresh to see more options. Identity You'll then just need to choose a name, you can tap on the refresh button to have Activate the game generate one for you, skin. or you can type in your own name if you'd prefer. Information matched. Activating clone. Once you load the game, you'll then spawn into space and have to quickly go through the basic camera controls. If you've played EVE before, the way the camera works will be very familiar to you. We will then be taught about the overview. The overview in this game will be very familiar with you as an EVE Online player. Just tap on the little eye icon on the right, right side of the screen to bring it up. We will then be taught how to dock in a station. Warp drive active. The game does mention that the only place that is safe inside EVE is inside a station, and I'm happy that this is true for EVE Echoes too. Highsec works the same way as Highsec works in EVE, you can be ganked in Highsec, Concord will kill the attacker, but it will not guarantee your safety. And Lowsec has similar engagement rules to Lowsec and EVE, where you can't really engage people outside stations or gates too well because there are sentry guns protecting them, and you will lose security status if you engage a player in low sec, and in no sec it's the same as EVE, where everything is free for all. Once we've docked in the station, we will then be told to undock again right away, and go to a combat tutorial site, and it'll ask you to autopilot there, Autopilot in EVE Echoes is actually much better than it is in EVE Online, and with Autopilot in EVE Echoes you actually travel to zero, so you warp to zero, not to ten like in EVE, and you, so you travel at the exact same speed as manually travelling, so it's always worth using Autopilot to get from A to B in EVE Echoes. Warp drive active.
when we arrive out of Whirlpool Land in the combat site, so we're going to take on our first rat right here. Fortunately, the tutorial rat is very weak, so to target the rat, we're going to open up by tapping on the eye in the right hand side corner like we did in the brief camera tutorial. We're then going to double tap on the rat, or you can also hold down on it to select the lock option. We're then going to click on our railgun in the bottom right corner of our screen to activate our railgun and kill the rat really quickly. The other icons you can see in the screen are the afterburner and uh, armor repairer. Of course, we do not need them for this fight. We're then going to be prompted to autopilot to Renin, which is one jump away. Since you guys are veterans and you definitely are experienced in EVE Online if you're watching my channel, I am going to edit the video a little bit to speed things up so we can get through the tutorial as fast as possible. So we've now arrived in Renin and we're now going to learn a little bit about the market in EVE Echoes as well as how to train some skills. So we're going to be prompted to open up the market. To do this, we just tap on our character avatar in the top left corner of the screen. We're then going to tap on the market icon. We're then going to look at the left hand side and we're going to click on ship, uh, click on frigate. And we're then going to scroll down until we find the Atron in the list. And we're then going to purchase an Atron in the station that we're in. And we should have just about enough money to purchase this first ship. We're now going to learn about how to train skills in Eve Echoes, and to do this, we're just going to tap on the little Eve icon in the top left corner. Then we're going to click on the skill icon. We're then going to just start training a skill, and for this, we're just going to train Planetology. You can skill several levels of it up into your skill queue. This is a good skill to start out with. We will then be prompted to level up our current tech level from level one to level two. I'll talk a lot more about tech level once we get into the skill part of this video after the tutorial is finished. EVE Echoes has quite a few differences from EVE Online when it comes to skills. But for now, just level up to level 2. We're then going to close those menus and open up the inventory, which you can find by tapping on the inventory icon underneath your character's avatar. We're then going to tap set active on our Atron, so that we're now boarded and the Atron is now active. And then we're just going to be given a new mission to go two jumps away to destroy some pirates. And once again, I will quickly edit this part out and to, to get us to the pirate base as fast as possible so we can jump into the me of Eve Echoes. Warp drive active. Warp drive active. So we're now arriving in the pirate base. This time this mission has two enemies as well as a cargo container to loot. We're just going to kill them in the same way as we killed the other NPCs. They aren't too difficult. Just as a pro tip, you can group guns in this too by dragging one gun on top of the other one as long as they're the same gun, which will make things a little easier. This next NPC is a little outside our optimal range of our guns. You can always find out your optimal range if you want by long tapping on, long pressing on the gun icon. What we're going to do is we're just going to tap on the NPC and click on approach so that we can go closer to it to finish it off. And once that NPC is dead, we're then going to learn about looting. Looting in Eve Echoes is a lot easier than it is in Eve because you can loot items from 10 kilometers away instead of 2.5 kilometers away like in EVE and once we've looted those two 150 millimeter railguns we're then going to autopilot to Arcelor and once again just to keep things as quick as possible because I know you guys are experienced EVE players we will just edit us into docking into Arcelor. Okay, so we're now docking and arriving in Arcelor, and we will now learn a little bit about fitting ships in EVE Echoes. It, ships in EVE Echoes have a few less slots than they do in EVE Online, but every module that you fit in EVE Echoes is an active module with an active ability, and that includes items like shield extenders and armor plates, etc. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to fit the 250mm railgun ones that we looted from the rats in that last mission. So we're just going to tap on the slot and then tap on the 150mm railguns to replace our civilian 150mm railguns with the Mark 1 ones that we looted from the site. On this screen you can also tap on various things to see more detailed stats about your ship. However, we're now uh, pretty much done with the tutorial. The last part is just clicking on the intelligent assistant, which is the tutorial helper agent in the left hand side. He's always there for you if you forget something in the game and there's a bunch of stuff that you can click on on him and he'll help you out if you ever get stuck or forget something from the tutorial. Since we're now done, I'm now going to jump in, jump onto my main character that I've been playing for a bunch of time and we'll, I'll show you the differences between the skills and various other things. Okay, so now let's take a look at my main character here and let's go a little more in depth with the skill system. Just like in EVE Online, in EVE Echoes, you train skills in real time. So if I open up my skill queue here, you can see that I'm training some skills and the time listed is how long it's going to take in real time. You guys are familiar with EVE, so you should know how this system works. Now, unlike in EVE Online, there are no attributes in EVE Echoes, which is actually really great. You just gain 60 SP per minute, which is 1 SP per second. And I like this system a lot. I really hate attributes in EVE Online and I'm glad that EVE Echoes has gotten rid of them. There's also another system that I actually really love in EVE Echoes 2 that I really wish they would implement into EVE Online, and that's this free training system. Now if I just clear out all of my skills out of this queue quickly, just to show, show it off for you, well, if you have no skill training, you will have what's known in game as free training, and what this means is that the skill points that, that when the queue is empty, my training will actually still continue for 24 hours. And so uh, you can see here my unallocated skill points are actually going up even though I don't have any skill in training. It's a little less efficient than training a skill directly, but it's, it's also super awesome and I really wish CCP would put this into the game too. Now let's talk a little bit about the tech level system as it's something that I mentioned briefly in the tutorial, but we didn't really cover it in depth. Now, unlike in EVE Online, where skills generally dictate which modules you can use, for example, you need the Heavy Assault Cruiser skill in order to fly a Heavy Assault Cruiser, or you need Tech 2 energy weapons to be able to, you know, fit a Tech 2 pulse laser to your ship. In EVE Echoes, it's not quite this way. So every ship and every item in the game actually has a tech level requirement rather than a specific skill requirement. And the best way to show this to you is probably going to be to open up the skill tree here for various ships. Now we're on Kodari here, but right now I'm tech level 6 and I'm pretty close to tech level 7. But this actually shows you what ships I can fly based on tech level. I, can, I would be able to fly this, this ship, the Therox, even without having the any of these other skills trained like advanced medium hybrid turret or battle cruiser command in eve echoes all i would need is to have the tech level unlocked in order to be able to sit in it and fly it so it's a bit more simplified than in eve and it's also pretty cool too if you invest a lot of your skill points into industrial skills for example then you can still fly good ships as long as you have total skill points and if you want to see how far away you are from the next tech level, you, you can tap on the current tech level part at the top and it'll bring up how much SP you need to reach the next tech level. It's based on total amount of skill points. Uh, you have a 24 hour training queue max in EVE Echoes. This is just the same as how it works in EVE Online. You can train up to 24 hours worth of skills, so if you're familiar with the alpha account restrictions, then it'll be very familiar to you. So we can just put in maybe Frigate Command 5 and then just throw in Medium uh, Projectile Weapons 5 too. And I did mention you don't need skills to fly a ship. Uh, it, there, there is no specific, you will probably notice from the Frigate Command skill here, there's no racial ship skills here. Uh, currently, instead, ship bonuses are a little different. So let's take a look at this stabber that I'm flying right here. Uh, there's no uh, 
there's no Mimitar cruiser skill, for example. What we see here is uh, medium projectile turret operation per level. And so this actually scales off my uh, my projectile turret skill rather than a cruiser skill at all. And there is a bonus to, to having cruiser command and that's 5% shields per level on top of whatever cruiser command normally gives you. So ships work a little bit differently in EVE Echoes. Let's talk about industry now. Now mining is almost exactly the same as how it works in EVE Online. You board a mining ship, you go and target a rock and then you mine it and then you come back some time after your ore hold is filled and then you dock up and reprocess your ore that you mined for minerals and this works very similar to to how it works in EVE Online. Once we have our minerals we can then try to build some ships. In EVE Echoes though unlike in EVE Online you also need planetary materials in order to be able to build ships. So I have enough planetary materials right now to be able to, to manu start manufacturing this Thrasher Mark II. But let's find out how we get planetary materials and we do that through the planetary production system in Evecos. Uh, you can see here I have a few planets here. I, I'm not actually mining anything right now. So let's just uh, make sure we reset our miners. In Evecos, you can only mine for 24 hours. Unlike in EVE Online where you can set up to, I believe, like, is it 30 days in EVE? It's something similar to that. You can put it on for four weeks, I think. Anyway, once uh, you can see here that I do have some materials already here, and let's go and pick some up. So if I click on launch here for the Lustring Ally, which is what I've been mining on Farid Planet 7, you can click on launch. It's then going to start spilling out into space. We then just need to click on the set destination option and then fly out and pick it up. It's as simple as that. Just be careful because other players can steal your PI if they happen to be at the same planet. They can see the can in space and uh, can take it if you're not actually there. Okay, so we just covered how to build ships, a combination of mining and PI materials. How do we manufacture rigs? So rigs are a little bit different in EVE Echoes. First of all, you need to find a rig PBC. They're not actually sold by NPCs at all. You'll actually have to uh, go out hunting for a specific site called an Inquisitor Anomaly. It's a cosmic anomaly that you just find out in space. You then just need to run that site and loot the cans at the end. And they'll have rig BPCs in them as well as a few other goodies. Once you have uh, rig BPCs, you'll then have to uh, come back to a station and you'll need salvage in order to build them. Now salvage comes from wrecks, which are dropped but just by rats in general. I believe you need to kill rats of level 4 or higher, to tech level 4 or higher in order to get wrecks from them. So if we tap on the projectile metastasis rig that I have here, you can see that I do already have enough uh, rig components in order to start building it. And we have two of these. Let's build both of them right now. That makes sense. Uh, you can see what it, the rig does specifically by holding down on it to uh, to get some information. So this one specifically just reduces the power grid requirement of projectile weapons, which could be useful on a ship like this Rasha, where I have almost my entire fitting maxed out right now. And I mentioned earlier that all modules are active, which is true. Rigs are a little bit different, different in EVE Echoes in that they are basically passive effects. You can see here, here I have a, a, a warp core optimization rig that I could fit right now. And the, the role of rigs, there's two different tiered categories of rigs. There's mechanical rigs, which is, are the ones on the right hand side. And then there are power grid rigs, which are on the left hand side. And these are mostly to replace the lack of passive abilities on the main fitting window. Modules are a little different in EVE Echoes in that you can't actually build any modules. They all come from rat drops or from missions. And faction modules come from special storyline missions. Modules are tiered in EVE Echoes in that they have a, a Mark 1, a Mark 3, a Mark 5, a Mark 7 and a Mark 9 version with obviously the higher Mark being the higher tier quality ones 
and then there's also a storyline faction and then a much better storyline version of them. So we just kill rats to get the generic stuff like the Mark V ones. Obviously the higher level difficulty sides drop the higher quality equipment. Let's talk about the mission system. So in Eve Echoes we have the encounter tab. If we go on to news here you can see a bunch of missions that are available. We have a pool of 24 that are available each time. Uh, you can sort by rarity and you can also sort by distance as well. So you can see which missions are close to you. There's three different types of missions. We have combat, transport and, and investigation. Combat is uh, you just go to a site, kill them, just like in EVE. Transport missions are very similar to courier missions in EVE. And investigation missions essentially just tell, tell you to go to a specific system and then you click on a scan button and then you complete the mission. So they're more like travel slash, you know, light exploration style missions. Uh, let's talk about the storyline mission system so if we scroll down here you can see that there are various faction icons next to some of these missions and that means that that means they're part of a storyline uh, and the way storylines work in this is that you need to complete three specific named missions from that news tab so for example for this mission for freedom we would need to complete freeing the slaves homecoming traveler and hidden threat in the in the pool uh, we'll have to try and find them you can refresh the pool of your 24 missions every 20 minutes so you can look specifically to try and find them if you want so there's traditional there's a hidden threat which is one of them that we needed to look for that specific storyline mission um, you can see here I'm actually pretty close some missions are a lot more rare than others so these ones that are highlighted in gold are actually rare missions that very infrequently pop up so you'll need to refresh the mission tab quite frequently once you complete all three missions you'll then get a voucher which will give you a storyline mission now i believe i have one already because i completed three missions here so you can see i, ha I have the free for freedom mission voucher you can also sell this on the market too so if you don't want to run the storyline yourself you can potentially just sell it on the market or maybe your a little worried about it because they are slightly more difficult than regular missions so now i have this uh, for freedom storyline mission in my journal which i could start running storyline missions are really good because uh, a lot of the enemies too it has some rare enemy spawns that can also drop storyline equipment and you'll also get a specific reward at the end so for example for this one here i'll I'd get the freedom 280 millimeter howitzer which is one of the faction items that i already have in my hangar so it, it pays to uh, keep a lookout for the specific rare missions that I mentioned. Again, you can also sort by rarity as well and look at specific missions. You can also see what rewards you would get from each mission too if you click on the storyline. So you can see here that this one would specifically award a 425mm autocannon and this one rewards the 280mm howitzer that we saw earlier. But overall, this is a pretty cool system. I, I sort of like it a little bit more than it, the EVE system, where you have to like pick out and choose specific missions from a pool rather than randomly being assigned a mission and then just having to run 16 missions to get a storyline. And so yeah, a fairly cool system and it's a cool way to get faction items. So let's talk about PvP in EVE Echoes right now. Now I thought it was super fun. Uh, there, there are a few uh, downsides to PvP in EVE Echoes right now and first of all th there is no directional scanner in EVE Echoes. There also is not uh, like map filters that you can use like in EVE like active pilots in space. You c the only map filter that you can use is uh, escape pods destroyed in the last hour and ships destroyed in the last hour. So it can be pretty difficult to find people when roaming in Nullsec especially in Deep Null because you don't really know where people are. There are no combat probes in the game yet, however there are some skills that list bonuses to scan duration, so I believe that they probably are coming at a certain point. It's important to keep in mind that EVE Echoes is in beta right now, so there are going to be things that are missing from the game. The developers do have weekly AMAs and they do take a lot of suggestions from the EVE, Eve Echoes community, so Hopefully 
the small grievances that I have with the system will be resolved by the time Eve Echoes is released. When you do find the PvP in Eve Echoes though, it is actually quite a lot of fun. I actually really enjoyed just roaming around and solo killing people in my Thrasher and it was fun. I actually joined up with a few people it, that I play EVE Online with and we uh, started camping a, an anomaly in low sec really close to high sec. Because there is no descan, it's hard to find people but because there is no descan, it's hard for people to realize what kind of danger they're in and so we just like set up shop like four of us camping a, uh, a high level anomaly. We left one frigate rat alive and we were just camping it and people just kept warping in in destroyers and dying to our camp. It was super fun. There is actually one aspect that I really like about EVE Echoes as opposed to EVE when it comes to the PvP system and that's uh, how the loot drops work. In EVE Online as you know that we have the loot fairy which rolls on entire stacks of items each time someone dies. However in EVE Echoes it works a little bit differently. The loot fairy is not quite as generous as it is in EVE Online but it is a lot more consistent because the way uh, loot drops work in uh, in Eve Echoes is uh, instead of dr instead of rolling on the entire stack, the the entire stack just has a uh, a forty percent chance of it just drops forty percent of that stack approximately. So for example, if we look at this probe kill right here, you'll see uh, you'll see that it look in his all of his items were in one stack, but they all everything just dropped a, a portion of that, and it seems it's about forty percent drop, sixty percent destruction in Eve Echoes. There also seems to be a healthy amount of variety in Eve Echo. So, for example, you have logistic frigates, you have uh, command destroyers as well that have huge bonuses to tank. You also have, uh, of course, the the interdictors as well as some ships that have special modes that give them different stats. There's, you know, recons. This is meant to be a, uh, a rapier, I think. It's called the Bellicose in this. There's also, uh, super interestingly, there are a few uh, wacky, uh, wacky uh, battle cruisers in in this that do a lot of different things. So the the uh, the attack battle cruisers are kind of uh, kind of the same, but you have things like the ECM Drake. But it seems like they're they're adding in different roles to battle cruisers that don't exist in uh, in Eve. Like we have the logistics Drake, which has the <laughs> the vulture skin on it, which is really cool. Uh, there's also the Ferox Guardian, which I'm pretty sure is just meant to be a vulture. But yeah, there, there's there's a. Uh... There, there's some interesting options that aren't available in EVE and it seems like they at least have quite a bit of variety and it would be a lot, lot of fun I think part in say 10 or 15 man content in this game. So that's the PvP slash combat part of this game. All in all it, it is pretty fun. The two major things that I feel are missing right now are a descan or probe system that allows you to actually find people in space because right now it's very problematic and takes quite a while. And number two is being able to tweak the overview a little more. Currently you can't have like corpse or alliances visible in the overview and they're, and they're not implemented in the game yet anyway. But there's also uh, a lack of uh, other columns and options such as uh, a velocity tab in the overview. I also would really like to see map filters that are in EVE Online like active pilots in space, active pilots docked. So you know where, if you're roaming deep null you have a way to actually find people rather than roaming around you know, helplessly in the dark and just not finding anything. One thing I would also love to be able to cover and tell you guys is the microtransaction policy in Eve Echoes. Unfortunately, there are no microtransactions in the game currently, so I can't tell you what they're like. 
The only thing that we know about microtransactions in Eve Echoes is that Hilmar at Eve London announced that they would be industry standard. Uh, ultimately, the microtransaction policy is probably going to be the major deciding factor on whether or not I play Eve Echoes at launch, and I'm sure it'll probably be a similar factor for you guys too. So I'd love to be able to cover it. The only thing that you can see is that there is a Plex uh, currency in the in the wallet here so we know that there is going to be a premium currency which is going to be plex what it's going to do uh, we don't know yet i'm hoping that they offer a similar it, it's similar to how it works in eve online where you can use it maybe to get an omega state status and that might let you train faster and increase the skill queue from 24 hours onwards and maybe always give you the unallocated sp if you don't have something in training i think that would be pretty fair as long as it's similar to EVE Online's microtransaction policy, I'd be pretty happy to be honest. If you guys are interested in EVE Echoes, I'd highly recommend you join the EVE Echoes Discord. I'll leave a link to it in the description too. The developers are very active in the EVE Echoes Discord and they listen to feedback generally. So, it's a good place to be. It's also a great place to get help if you're confused about various parts of the game. There are a lot of helpful people in the Discord that can help you out. So in conclusion, I had a lot of fun playing Eve Echoes. It's in open beta right now, so there's still some improvements being made to the game. Uh, I think it captures the spirit of Eve really well. You can gank people in high sec, it's still full loot PvP. Every item aside from the low tier studying equipment is created or looted by players. So it has an economy similar to Eve. The core of Eve's sandbox is here and that's great. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to Eve Echoes on launch as a more casual and accessible Eve experience and what I really hope is that players who enjoy Eve Echoes will also come over and play Eve Online with us who otherwise wouldn't. And this video is definitely too long already so if you're still watching just download the game and give it a shot.